One day, when I was home alone because everyone in my family hates being around me, I started browsing through Xfinity On Demand to look for some Bubble Guppies episodes to watch. When I looked under the section of Season 4 episodes, the first one listed was called Darkness. It was clearly a new episode, but strangely enough, I had never even heard of it. No announcements on Nickelodeon, no one on the wiki site had mentioned it, and nothing on their Facebook page. My curiosity was fully piqued, so I clicked on it and it started playing. The first thing to catch my attention was that it cut straight to the episode. There was no Nick Jr. interstitial like there usually was. All right, straight to it, huh? I mumbled, being amazingly perceptive. The episode began as usual. The title was shown, the screen filled with water, the little fish came in and said, Bubble guppies, just like normal. Molly showed up and said, Hi, it's me, Molly, and it's time for... But she was interrupted by the loud sound of static. She followed the sound, and it led to Gil sitting on the ground in front of an old-fashioned TV, the ones that actually had an antenna. His back was to the camera, and he just stared intently at the static on the TV. After quickly glancing at the audience for a second, she turned to Gil and asked, uh, Gilly, what are you doing? Gil turned off the TV and turned around to face Molly. Nothing. Why? His voice sounded really off on that line. He said that unusually slow and almost robot-like. Uh, do you know what time it is? Molly asked. Gil turned to face the audience and the camera zoomed in on him. He had a very bored look on his face. He said... It's time for bubble guppies. He said it in a hoarse whisper like he was losing his voice. After that opening segment, the theme song finally started. However, it was in black and white for some reason. The first few seconds were typical, but things started going strange when it was time for the guppies to introduce themselves. When it was Gobi's turn, the footage was forward, but the audio was in reverse. Instead of saying, I'm Gobi, the audio said, Eep go me. The same thing happened in Nani's introduction. Instead of hearing, I'm Nani, I heard, E non my. After that, the theme song continued with the colors slowly fading into view. After the theme song, the screen went black for a good solid minute. About halfway through, a strange loud sound filled the screen. It was a loud clanging noise that sounded like someone took a small metal pipe and slammed it against a metal radiator. The sound made me jump, so I reached for the remote and turned the volume down, not even thinking about how a sound can actually fill a screen. After 30 seconds of the black screen and clanging noise, the episode cuts to the school. Instead of being the bright, vibrant yellow it usually is, the building was instead an ugly, dull yellow that was run down and cracked. When the camera panned into the school like it normally does, the guppies went to sit down. However, they didn't say hello to the audience. Bastards. They all just glanced at me with very cold, unbecoming expressions. This was not like them at all. When Mr. Grouper came in, the guppies greeted him with, Good morning, Mr. Grouper. The way it sounded exactly like how the little girl said, Come play with us in the movie The Shining. Oddly enough, Mr. Grouper greeted them back with the same jolly demeanor he usually had, as if nothing was even wrong. Ah, then that horrible clanging sound showed up again. Clang, clang, clang. Nobody questioned it. Everyone just sat there and listened. This clanging kept going on and on for ten seconds. Then the chilling sound of a dog howling accompanied the clang. The door of the school opened and Molly and Gil came in. Gil was holding Bubble Puppy in his arms, but Bubble Puppy's eyes were closed and he wasn't moving. He looked like he... Well, I'll leave it up to you to figure that part out. The two guppies came inside and started mumbling with a chilling tone. You don't have to be afraid of being lost and lonely, Gil mumbled, still holding Bubble Puppy in his arms. 
Everything you need is right before your eyes, Molly mumbled while patting the floor with her hand. Gil set Bubble Puppy on the ground and both he and Molly left him there. The camera focused on Bubble Puppy laying on the floor. His fur was dirty and scruffy and his left ear was bloody with a piece of it missing. Oh, that was when I knew a thing I told you to assume was indeed the case. The camera just held on Bubble Pupsy's unmoving body, but at this point I didn't even bother paying attention to how long the scene was. Bubble Puppy's tail and right paw twitched for half a second and the screen went to black again. Oh, great zombie dogs. I started to reflect on what I just saw. At first I thought this was going to be an episode teaching kids about, you know, when life ends. Then I realized that Bubble Guppies is clearly not the right kind of show to be doing that, especially not with such an unsettling tone with these kinds of sounds and images. After going black for another few seconds, the screen then cut to Nani. He was sitting in the middle of the floor in the classroom. The other Guppies and Mr. Grouper are nowhere to be seen. My guess is they're either participating in the pop song or they're on the other side of the room. The camera just zoomed in on Nani who was staring at me with a listless expression. Oh, suddenly blood started leaking out of the corner of his mouth like it was drool. Nani rubbed the blood off his mouth with his fingers and stared at his fingers for a bit instead of getting a napkin. Then he stared at me again, gradually opening his eyes wider and wider. He started talking directly to the audience, which was something he rarely did unless he was defining a word. He said this, What you are about to see will forever change the way you look at us. Whether for better or for worse depends on who you are. One thing's for sure. You shall not take the name of Bubble Guppies in vain. Okay, after that speech, the screen faded to black, leaving only Nani's eyes visible. His deep green eyes stared intensely at my brown eyes. After a few seconds, his eyes changed from vibrant green to hellish red. Suddenly, a loud boom, sounding like either a gunshot or an explosion, filled the screen and made Nani's eyes disappear. That speech gave me the chills. If any other character would have said it, it still would have been creepy and unsettling regardless. The fact that my favorite guppy said it just made it all the more chilling. Of course, it didn't help the fact that Nani always talks really deadpan. I wondered what it must have been like for Jet Jurgensmeyer to be in the sound booth recording those lines. The screen then cut to the other guppies sitting at a table in the classroom just staring blankly at the floor. I noticed that Dima was missing. Mr. Grouper came in from the right side of the screen and came up to Gobi. Gobi, he said. Gobi looked up at his teacher. Gobi, you can come now. Dima has room for you now. Come, Gobi, come. Dima is waiting. Mr. Grouper mumbled while coaxing Gobi from the front of the table. The look and tone of Mr. Grouper was very moody and anxious, as if he was afraid of... something? Gobi obeyed and followed Mr. Grouper outside the school building. That stupid clanging sound showed up again, possibly louder than it was the first few times I heard it. When the clanging sound finally stopped, the footage suddenly became incredibly blurry and distorted, kind of like an old VHS tape or a scratch-up DVD. However, I was only able to barely make out what was going on. The other guppies looked at the door and the screen cut to the door opening, and Mr. Grouper, Gobi, and Dima came in. Gobi's arm seemed to have blood shooting out of it, and Dima was holding something in her hand that looked like a small dagger. Holy shit, did Dima just slice Gobi's arm? I said aloud. Then there was a strange hissing sound like this. green faded to black. I decided to vent on what I saw. Okay, what the hell is this? This is not Bubble Guppies. This is more like someone's sadistic reimagination. Whoever made this has some issues. The black screen started to have hazy gray smoke appear. A silhouette of Una appeared and she very slowly stepped out of the fog. Open your heart to us, she said very deadpan. Gobi stepped out of the fog next. 
His arm was wrapped in a bandage from Dima cutting it earlier. Open your mind to us, Gobi mumbled. Gil showed up next, his hands with blood dripping out of them. We whisper in the dark of the night, so listen closely, Gil said quietly but not in a whisper. You can't escape us, Molly's voice said. She stepped out of the fog and grabbed Gil's bloody hand and it made a strange squishing sound. Dima stepped out of the fog and out the dagger she used earlier with Gobi's blood still on it. You'll dream about us night and day. You'll see our faces when you close your eyes. You'll hear our voices and giggles in dead silence, Dima said with a sly tone in her voice. She started to run her thumb and index finger across the dagger's blade with Gobi's blood rubbing off on her skin. Nani was the last to step out of the fog. He had dark circles around both his eyes. He must have gotten beaten up because he wasn't like that in the previous scenes. He started pointing at the screen. I told you, you will not take us in vain. You will take us seriously. He then put his hand down at his side. The fog started to clear up, but once it did, I started hearing strange ghostly moaning and whooshing sounds. The screen faded to black again. Then I heard two gunshots. There was no mistake about it. They were definitely gunshots. After the gunshots ceased, the screen went black again. Eerie piano music started to play, and a red picture started to slowly fade into view. It took me a few seconds to make out what it was, and when it came into view, my eyes widened. The, the picture was a pentagram. They literally showed what is essentially a satanic symbol on a kid's cartoon. The horrible images stayed on screen for several seconds. A gunshot showed up again, and the pentagram disappeared. The title showed up again. However, instead of being the blue and green color it usually is, it was red and looked like it was written in blood. Right underneath the title, the words created by Johnny Belt and Robert Skull were written in white letters. Suddenly the screen turned to static for about five seconds before it went back to regular TV. I turned the TV off and just sat on the couch. Silent, confused, scared, somewhat angry all at once. I grabbed my cell phone next to me and Google searched Johnny Belt and Robert Skull. The first page that came up in the Google search led to the website for Nick Animation Studio. I clicked on it. It showed me the names, Robert Skull and Johnny Belt in bold letters. I simply stared at their names, tears welling in my eyes. Why would you do this to my guppies? Well, technically to your guppies. Why, you demented monsters? Why? I complained. It took me a whole week to watch Bubble Guppies again, but it's going to take a lot longer for me to forget the scary episode known only as Darkness.